Today is a super exciting day because I received my new M2 Max Max Studio three days ago and I have been putting it through some of its paces and comparing it against a recently purchased M1 Max that I had purchased uh, before I found out about the new version coming out. So this unit here is the M1 Max Max Studio with one terabyte of SSD, um, but otherwise a base config. And conversely, um, the unit behind me here is the new M2 with the same exact config. Pricing costs a little bit more up here in Canada, but for our American friends, um, this was $2,000 retail. Um, and of course the incoming model is also $2,000 retail. So not really uh, any price increases, although lately, uh, Costco, Costco has been selling a base config of the M1 Max uh, for really cheap, about 500 bucks less than uh, normal retail. So great deal if you're looking for one. Um, but today uh, I'm going to walk you guys through some basic benchmarks uh, that I've run on my computer. I'm not necessarily talking about video workflows and photo workflows, which I actually use often uh, just because I'm not really sure how to demonstrate those speed increases. Uh, but I'll be usually running the usual benchmarks such as Geekbench 6, GFX Metal, and a host of other things um, that will sort of give you guys some insight as far as what you can expect for performance gains with the new model. Now, just a uh, cautionary note, I am not a professional tester, nor am I a professional video editor by any stretch of the imagination. I am just merely a enthusiast that likes creating YouTube videos for my channel. Now, other things I do want to mention too, in case you weren't aware, differences between the M1 Max and the M2 Max very minimal. Uh, you get 10 billion extra transistors in this unit because of course it's got two additional high efficiency cores as well as six additional GPU cores and they've also clocked the system clock speed from 3.2 gigahertz to 3.5 gigahertz. Um, ports, dimensions in terms of functionality is really all the same uh, with some tweaks to the HDMI port to support 8k displays as well as 240 hertz at 4k with variable refresh rate, Bluetooth 5.3, as well as Wi-Fi 6E, which is supposed to give you uh, speeds better than gigabit hardwired ethernet. So let's dive right in and show you guys what I found. So before I talk about these results here and what I'm doing, I just wanted to point out that throughout this video, I'll be accelerating and decelerating some of these tests. So don't use what you see on screen as gospel as far as actual world speed tests, because in the time frame that I have on YouTube, and to be able to show you these results um, in a timely manner and be able to speak to it while it's playing, um, that I had to do that. So Speedometer 2.0 benchmark is basically a web browser benchmark that tests the responsiveness of web applications. On the right, we have the M2 Max coming at 334, while the M1 Max comes in at 260, or about a 22% difference. In reality, the difference is just a mere few seconds between the two computers. So our next benchmark that we're running is the latest copy of Geekbench 6, which basically runs our CPU through a litany of tests that will test both a single core and multi-core capabilities um, of the M1 and M2 Max CPUs. Now, pardon the timing differences of the test, the M2 Max is naturally going to complete faster, so this is why you're seeing a slight variation on the left versus the right. But ultimately, the Computers complete the test, and the M1 Max comes in with a score for single core of 2422 versus the 2668 of the M2 Max, uh, giving it a 9.2% edge over the previous generation CPU. And then the uh, multi core score is 12,677 versus the 14,712. So, again, a difference or an improvement on the M2 Max of about 13.8%. Now, so far, the M2 Max is looking pretty darn good from a performance standpoint. However, using our Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test, that it starts to show some interesting results as far as SSD speeds are concerned. We're currently running a 1GB test file, and with the M1 Max on the left and the M2 Max on the right, that it is pretty apparent that the read speeds of the M1 Max is in fact about 500 megabytes per second faster than the M2 Max, but the M2 Max, on the other hand, has about a 200 megabyte per second faster write speed over the M1 Max. Switching over to our 5 gigabyte test file shows similar performance gains and losses in the SSDs. The M2 Max gains about 5% or about 200 megabytes per second in write speed, 
at the expense of losing 10% on the read speed in comparison to the lower density SSDs in the M1 Max. These speed differences don't ultimately translate to real world differences because both SSDs in these computers are extremely fast. Next up, I've got some screenshots from a benchmark tool called GFX Metal. Feel free to pause the video so that the text appears more clearly. Now looking at the numbers across the board, we see anywhere between a 15 and about 30% improvement for most of the tests. And I mean, that is really attributed to the fact that the M2 Max does have six additional GPU cores and are also clocked at 300 megahertz higher than the previous M1 Max. Now, what is really neat is um, in the next screenshot, uh, as we wait for it here to show up, um, there is a test called texturing, and the M1 actually comes in at 38 frames per second, while the M2 comes in at a whopping 71, which is more than 46% improvement in speed. And I'm not sure if that's a measurement anomaly or if it's really, in fact, the M2 Max being optimized to deliver that level of performance. Now, this is my last demonstration here where I am doing a transcoding test using Handbrake. In this test, I am taking three 4K files um, and transcoding them back down to full HD resolution at 30 frames per second. Now, the M1 Max on the left is transcoding that first file at approximately 36 frames per second, while the M2 Max on the right is doing that same file at 47 frames per second, or approximately 22% faster. Now, as Handbrake goes through each of these files, that frame rate processing does change because it is subject to the content contained within each of those files. But the gist of it is that the M2 Max is objectively faster in every way. Now, this is not to say that the M1 Max is a slowpoke. In fact, we are talking minimal differences in a mere amount of seconds being measured. So regardless, both M1 and M2 Max CPUs are exceptionally fast and powerful. Well, there you guys have it. It's pretty clear that the M2 version of the Max Studio is faster in almost every way compared to the outgoing model, with the exception of a slight performance hit on the read speeds of the SSD. I'm really happy with this purchase, and I'm really happy that Apple didn't really bump the price of the M2 version of the Mac Studio, at least in Canada. Um, and it basically offers everything that the previous generation had and more. Now, I'm not sure whether or not Apple has addressed some of the GPU CPU scaling problems because I believe in the M1 Mac Studio that it didn't necessarily hit its full potential because of some caching issues. But I believe that only affected the Ultra line of CPUs. And of course, I don't have an M2 or an M1 Ultra to compare that against. But the computer is super fast. Um, the numbers prove it. We can reasonably expect a 15 to 45% improvement on certain tasks. And so for the same money, it made a lot of sense for me just to go with an M2 version of this computer and just return my M1. Now, if you guys aren't in that position and you already own an M1 and are thinking of selling it and buying an M2, you might wanna rethink that because while the benchmark numbers do show an improvement, that I wouldn't necessarily say that for everyday tasks that that difference is worth taking several uh, a hit on several hundred dollars on your computer uh, to trade up. Computers always constantly get better. By next year, there might be an M3 and the year after an M4. So you can never really continue catching that train unless you have boatloads of money. Now, if you are still thinking about buying a M1 Mac Studio, I know Costco USA right now is selling the base config version for $14.99, which is extremely good value. Um, and if I could actually have access to that price point for a M1 Max Mac Studio, that I would not be buying this M2. But since I'm in Canada and I get screwed on everything for pricing, I may as well just buy the latest and greatest since it's going to cost me the same anyways. So I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you like it, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And thank you for watching.